Welcome back to this week's prophetic word. It is always a joy and a deep, deep honor to be coming into your world wherever you may be. Amen. Now, I believe that you are here on purpose, that God has ordered your steps, that you are here to receive the word on tonight, wherever you may be in life, wherever you may find yourself tonight, understand very clearly that the Lord knows your name. He knows your name, he knows your precise location, but he also knows the plans that he has for your life. God is a master creator and he is a creative genius. He is faithful and well able to make sure that he gives you the tools, the insight, the revelation, come on, even the prophetic word, the prophetic anointing that is required to shift you from where you are to where you should be to the next dimension of your destiny. Now, I want to say very clearly that tonight is going to be a prophetic word for the month of November, but it is going to continue manifesting and impacting people's lives far beyond November. But let me be very clear, and I give God alone all the glory. What the Lord is going to speak and release over your life tonight is going to have powerful prophetic impact in the month of November. So I want you to stir up your faith. I want to encourage you to get ready. Amen. There's going to be a word tonight that's going to shift some things for a lot of people. And I'm here for it. And I'm giving God all the glory in advance. Amen. Hallelujah. My name is Dr. JoLynn Whitaker. This is our regular space. That's all I want to say about me. Amen. Because tonight it's all about Jesus Christ. Tonight it is all about the word of the Lord for you. And God told me to tell you that what he is going to speak tonight is going to give you great insight into your life, maybe even your past, things that you have gone through, things that you have dealt with, stuff that is going on in your world even now, but then also where he is taking you in the season to come. Because nothing that is happening in your life, in your environment, or in the world at large is a surprise to God. There's nothing new under the sun. The Lord knows the end from the beginning. Amen. And the devil may have had a plot, but God always has a plan. No, I said he always has a plan. Glory to God. The Lord will meet you right where you are and take you to another level in your life, launch you into a brand new season. So I believe this word is going to be confirmation for you, but it is also going to be a prophetic anointed activation in your life that's going to help things to get moving. Amen. And I'm going to be just waiting on your praise reports because I already know what's going to happen. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, if y'all are ready, let me pray real quick, and then we're going to dive deep into this word tonight. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every single person that is present. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, for the person that is listening right now, God. I ask you to meet them right where they are, Father, to minister to them deeply right now in this moment, Lord. I ask you to open their heart wide to receive all that you have to say tonight, God. I ask you to bless them where they are, Lord. I ask you to do things in their life that only you can do, oh God, that their faith may go to another level. And that the blessing that comes to rest upon their life will speak, will speak on your behalf and testify as to the miraculous power of Jesus Christ. Now I give you and you alone all the glory, Father, and I say, use me, Father, for the preaching and prophesying of tonight's word, O Lord, and for the blessing of your people. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let's go ahead and get started. If you'd like to take notes, there's going to be a lot to write down tonight. Amen. However, if you prefer to just kind of hone in on the word and pay attention, just absorb it all, that is perfectly fine as well. This message will be replayed next week on my own platform. So you can always go back and watch it again if you want to. Amen. So the Lord spoke this to me, and I'm going to read it to you exactly the way I wrote it down. He said, big destiny, big battles, bigger blessings. Ooh, big destiny, big battles, bigger blessings. So the bigger the blessing that God has ordained for your life, the more you will be fought 
And, and so many of you know that you've not been wrestling against flesh and blood. The bizarre, unusual, uncommon warfare of this season has been just that. Bizarre, unusual, uncommon. But I prophesy in the strong name of Jesus Christ that if you can have the faith, come on, and it's going to take some faith to pull your eyes away from the destruction and the loss and the attack of the enemy on you and fix your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will see a breakthrough that will blow your mind because the Lord said when the blessing is going to be big, that's when the attack prior is big. And we learn that, that this is the classic, but iconic Luke chapter four principle that I reference very often, but I do so for a reason, because we see that in Luke chapter four, Jesus Christ himself has just been identified as the son of God. He's just been baptized by John the Baptist. The, the heavens opened, a voice from heaven identified him as the son of God, the dove descended, amen. Then Jesus went off into the desert, bam, immediately the devil shows up and begins to attack and tempt him in various ways. I mean, he came at him from every direction. But then we see all the way down there in Luke 4, 13, when that ended, then what happened? When the attack ended, what happened? Well, that's when Jesus launched into his prolific, world-changing three-and-a-half-year ministry. So the attack, the brutality of the attack came right before a massive blessing, a massive breakthrough. You've got to take this for what the Lord is showing it, you it to be. Big attacks come before big blessings. Big attacks come before big breakthroughs. Big attacks come before big uh, elevations into destiny. Big activations into uh, purpose. Come on, big release and acquisition of big promises. So I want to tell you, my friend, what you have been going through, it's not been about where you are now. It is all about where you are going in the season to come. Now, we can also say this, and this is supported by the Luke 4 principle as well. The greater your anointing, the greater the attack. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the, the moment you have the attention of God, you're going to get the attention of the enemy. But we're not going to focus on that. Because here's the reality. The greater your anointing, also, the greater the favor that's going to rest on your life. Let me prove it to you. If God has anointed you and appointed you for such a time as this, if there is destiny on your life, if God is going to use you, come on, to, to, to be the, the bloodline curse breaker for your whole family, to be a person that is impactful in your community, to be a voice to the people around you in whatever capacity is going to use you, to be a business owner that's going to employ many people, to be an impactful person that's going to be uh, an influencer in whatever industry he places you you, so on and so forth. If there is a call of God on your life, and there is, glory to God, isn't it in the Lord's best interest to protect you? Yes, it is. Isn't it in his best interest to, to propel you into destiny and to release the provision and the resources that you need? Oh, yes, it is. So the bigger your anointing, yeah, the bigger the attacks are, but the bigger the favor. Glory to God. And then I want you to begin standing also on Psalm 512. And when you see an attack and a weapon attempting to, to form against you, thank God that weapon will not prosper. It might be trying to form, but it's not going to prosper. But even more so, the favor of God is going to surround you as a shield. And I want you to begin declaring that scripture. When you see the devil starting to do something, don't acknowledge it. Don't receive it. Don't brace yourself for the hit. Don't brace yourself for the hit. Understand that if you are a righteous child of God in good standing with the Lord, that's an illegal trespass. That's an illegal attack on your life. And he has to back off in the name of Jesus and just begin to declare over yourself, Psalm 5 and 12, God, I thank you that your favor surrounds me as a shield. And that thing is going to bounce right off of me and have no effect at all. As a matter of fact, I hear the Holy Ghost saying this. In the month of November, oh, I, I feel the anointing. In the month of November, the enemy is going to have to admit that he took his best shot at you and failed. The enemy will have to admit that not only did he take his best shot and fail, 
but he's going to wish that he never tried it against you at all. Because not only did you come out stronger, but you're about to come out even more blessed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because the greater your anointing, the greater the favor on your life. And many of you are going to see that come to pass for you in November. Glory to God. Now our text for tonight is 1 Peter 2 and 9, which talks about you being called out of darkness God has called you out of darkness. You are no longer a part of the whole world system. You might be living in this world, but you are not of this world. You are under the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Your God provides for you. He protects you. Glory to God. He is the lifter of your head. He is the giver of your bread. He is the resurrector of things that seem dead. He is the one who propels you ahead and he has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. But now you have also been inducted into a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. And we're going to land right there and we're going to, we're going to camp out in that verse and let the Lord uh, begin to minister to you prophetically. It's going to explain to you what you've been going through, maybe even the, the story of your whole life, but also prophesy as to what the Lord is going to be releasing to you in the season to come. Amen. You've been called out of darkness into the Lord's marvelous light. You are now a part of this royal priesthood. Amen. You are not called to live a common life. You are called to live a royal life. You are a child of the king. What king? King Jesus. Hallelujah. King Jesus. You're a child of the king. The Lord has ushered you in from the courtyard. Come on now. And now you are in the palace. Glory to God. And you are a child of the king. You are called to royal life. You are called to royal things, not common things. Hallelujah. But now when you are meant for big things, we've got to go here. When you are meant for big things, when you are meant for a royal life, when you are meant to live as one of the Lord's uh, royal subjects of his kingdom, you often don't feel at home in average surroundings. Nothing wrong with average surroundings. You just know deep in your spirit it's not for you. Come on, let's just be real and, and, and you're at home here. Glory to God. It's just me and you and the Holy Ghost. You can admit what the Lord already knows to be true. And that is this. You've always known that you're not like everybody else. You've always known that God has called you to live a special life. Yes, it's called an anointing. It's called being a part of this royal priesthood. Glory to God. It's called being a child of the most high God, a son or a daughter of the king. You're not common. You're royal. Glory to God. You have been cut from a royal cloth. Hallelujah. You are destined for significant, relevant things in this world. And that explains it. That explains why you are not completely at home in average surroundings. The things that satisfy other people don't satisfy you. God bless them. You just, you just can't be satisfied with that. You can't laugh at those jokes. It's silly to you. You can't be uh, uh, entertained by certain things. It's shallow to you. That's right. God has called you into the deep things of God. You are not satisfied to just splash in, in the shallows. No, you need to swim in the deep things. Come on here. And you've always been known that you're different, that you're not made for common things, but that you are made for big things. And that's why you don't feel at home. In average surroundings, your spirit has literally been designed for something more. Stay with me. Now, don't think it's strange, however, when most people don't understand you. They just don't get you. They can't figure you out. You are a little different to them. They don't speak your language, and you certainly don't speak their language. Nothing wrong with them. They're very good people, most of them. Amen. God bless them. But you know that you're different. The Lord said it like this. He said it's because eagles speak a very uncommon language. Royals speak a very uncommon language. And that's why many people don't understand you. 
That's why you can talk to people about your dreams. You can talk to people even about your faith. You can talk to people about your vision. You can talk to people about your, 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 your vision for your life, the way that you know that God is calling you to live. And they're going to look at you and to them, it sounds like you're bragging. To them, it sounds like, you know, you're, you've got your head in the clouds. Well, no, it's not really that. It's that you speak the language of royals. And many people can't understand that. You speak the language of an eagle. And many people can't understand that. My spiritual father has a saying, and I love it. He says, uh, an eagle will, will never be satisfied to peck in the chicken coop. It, ain't that the truth? An eagle will never be satisfied to peck in the chicken coop. It's not going to happen for you. You are called to be royal in this world, a representative, a kingdom ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ, a walking, talking, living, breathing testimony of who the king is. Glory to God. So when we begin to think about you being a royal here in this world, when we, we begin to talk about you being an eagle here in this world, when we begin to talk about and to just affirm and confirm your identity in Christ, that you are here to live a significant life of goodness and royalty and all the best things on the earth are meant for you. God will supply all your need according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow to it. God has called you to be a lender, but never a borrower, the head, but never the tail. Come on here. This is your identity. But when you are called to live that type of royal uncommon life, you must be willing to se separate yourself from those who are not willing or interested in living a royal uncommon life. Let me give you some examples. We don't hear about King David hanging out with the guys, uh, going out for some, you know, for some brewskis with the guys. We don't hear about that. <laughs> we don't hear about King David, um, you know, going out for some drinks and to shoot darts with, with the boys. We don't hear about that. What we hear about is, is David being relegated to a job that very few people wanted to do, taking care of uh, his father's sheep, fighting off lions and bears. Come on, it be, it literally being trained for a future that was going to be highly, highly impactful. He was destined to become king. So in reality, the battles that he fought were training him for his position as royalty in life. Come on here. That's your word. The battles that you have fought were literally your training. Uh, setting you up and training you, training you to occupy the royal position that God has already prepared for you. Amen. So we don't know what the brothers were doing back there at the house, but we do know that David was doing his job. He was about his job. He was about his focus. He was in training. He was a worshiper. He was writing the Psalms. Hallelujah. And then when the opportunity arose for him to deal with Goliath, he already had the skill set that was required to solve a problem that all these other people could not solve. These so-called mighty men of war could not solve the problem that was Goliath. But David was able to. He was anointed for it. He was trained for it. Glory to God. And then what happened? He was immediately propelled into proximity of royalty and put in position to step into his destiny. But during that whole season of preparation... We don't hear about David doing common things. We see David being willing to be separate, being willing to just be focused on the season that he was in, staying in position. Hallelujah. Because he knew that he was made for more. We don't hear about Ruth's nights at the club because I got to do me. We don't hear about Ruth's uh, trips with the girls now and then because I got to do me. No. No, no. What we hear about is Ruth's very iconic moment where Naomi is getting ready to go to Bethlehem. There's a famine in the land. All three women are grieving. They all lost their husbands. And her sister-in-law, Orpah, is getting ready to go back to Moab. Come on, because let's just be real. In moments of crisis and in times of duress, Many people will just go back to what they know. The uncertainty of the moment is too much. The overwhelming emotion of the moment is just too much. And many people will just 
prefer to go back to what they know, even if it is trash, even if it is garbage, even if it is false religion. Mm -hmm. So what we hear about for Ruth is this iconic moment where Naomi is getting ready to go to Bethlehem and she's telling these girls, go back to your family. I, I don't know what's going to happen here. I have no idea what's getting ready to happen. And, 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 and Orpah says, okay. And she takes off and goes back to her people in Moab. Translation. She goes back to her old life, worshiping false gods, practicing false uh, religion and false practices. Come on here. After she had been exposed to the truth of the Lord, the truth of God, the power of the Lord, of the God of Israel. Do you know that there are some people who can know all about Jesus and they still go back to their filth? Do you know there are some people who can actually experience the Lord, experience his presence and the power of his might, and they'll still go back to sin. They'll still go back to their whatever it is, tarot cards, anagram, what, pick your poison. Yeah, there are, there are, these are the Orpahs. These are the Orpahs. But then there are the Ruths. Then there are the Ruths who will cling to Naomi, her spiritual mother, and say, I'm not leaving you. I'm going to be loyal. Where you go, I will go. Your land will be my land. Your people will be my people. Your God is my God. And that loyalty and demonstration of character, watch this, and willing to separate from Orpah, put Ruth in position to launch into her destiny. Now, we know what happened to Ruth. She goes on to Bethlehem very quickly. She meets Boaz, the man that she would marry. Very quickly, her marriage to Boaz changes her life exponentially. I'm talking about this woman who was in her 40s, according to biblical standards, no children, no money in the bank. Okay, so she had nothing in life but faith. That's a word for somebody tonight. The only thing you need in life to make it, listen to me now, I'm prophesying to you. The only thing you need in life to make it is faith and a willingness to take God at his word. And if you will commit and position yourself to be pulled out of darkness into his marvelous light, because you are royal, because you are an eagle, because you are not called to live a common life, because you are here to be a part of this royal priesthood, hallelujah, you will see God do amazing things in your life. Hallelujah. But not everybody can go where you're going. Orpah couldn't go where Ruth was going. How do we know that? Well, we don't hear anything more about Orpah after that. The last we hear about her, she went back to Moab. But we know a lot about what happened to Ruth. Immediately she meets Boaz. Quickly she marries the man. Overnight she becomes first lady of a community. Co-owner of a successful business. Literally married the most eligible sought after bachelor in town. Becomes wealthy in her own right, in her own right as a wife. Life changing. This is the fruition and the culmination of her destiny. Because when you step into the life that God has for you, he says, I know the plans I have for you. They're good plans to give you a life, a hope, and a future to prosper you, not to harm you, to bring you an to an expected end, which means to lead you to what I've already planned for you. It's always going to be good. It's always going to be wonderful because God has your best interest at heart. Hallelujah. We don't hear about Ruth hanging out at the club because I got to do me. No, we hear about Ruth displaying character. We hear about her displaying loyalty. We hear about her confessing and declaring her loyalty to the Lord. Hallelujah. And we see the effect of that. Uncommon people do not do common things. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. Uncommon people don't do common things. Anointed people of destiny fly higher than all that. They fly at elevations that most people don't reach, which is why you will reach elevations and echelons in life that most people don't. Come with me quickly to Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5. Joshua 3 and 5. The context here is the people were getting ready to access their promise. They had been wandering. They had been through hell and high water. They'd already been through Egypt. They, they'd already been through the desert. And now they're getting ready 
to access their promise. And look at what Joshua says to them in Joshua 3 and 5. He says, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. To sanctify means to set yourself apart, to make yourself holy. Uncommon people don't do common things. In order to access all that the Lord has for you, in order to see God do amazing things in your life, you got to sanctify yourself. Hallelujah. Now, to whom much is given, much is required. That's what the word says in Luke 12 and 48. Big destiny people possess uncommon passion, uncommon persistence, uncommon vision, loyalty, faith, anointing, and favor. And that's you. That's you. So in closing, the Lord is saying to you this month for this season, separate yourself. Come on, you already, you're already thinking. You already know some people you got to let go of. You already know some habits you've got to let go of. And I prophesy when you do, you will see the Lord begin to do amazing things in your life. It's going to happen quickly. Hallelujah. Because you're not here to live a common life. You're here to live an uncommon royal life. Hallelujah. I prophesy a quick shift, a quick work in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm going to look forward to your praise reports. And until we meet again next week, I'm praying for you. I love you with the love of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you so much for sowing into this ministry. John and I appreciate you so much. I pray an abundant harvest over you according to Malachi 3 and 10. And I look forward to hearing all that the Lord does for you. In spring of 2011, I made one of the most momentous decisions of my life. I followed the voice of God and the very specific instructions of the Lord and went to a little broken down lake house where I would begin a brand new season of my life. It was a date with destiny. It was there at that lake house that the Lord would speak to me powerfully, give me instruction and revelation for breaking generational curses, uh, engaging in victorious supernatural warfare, even accelerating my preparation for purpose, for love, for marriage. It was a date with destiny. You know, the Lord loves us just that much. He wants us to to grow and to be able to step into everything that he has for us. I believe that many of you are in transition right now. Maybe you are actually in the midst of your own date with destiny and the Lord is wanting to prepare you for breakthrough to access what he's got for you in the next season. Maybe you just need to benefit from the strategy that I learned and that broken period of my life. You see, I learned that there could be purpose and happiness, fulfillment and new joy, even after loss and grief. I would love to get this book into your hands. I believe it's time for you to have your own date with destiny. You can grab your own copy at datewithdestinybook.com or my primary website, jolynwhitaker.org. I would love to send you a copy.